Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. And all the time, you know, when I get this assignment, I'm always happy because to be able to speak the word of God is life. It should give us life. No fear. I have grown so much being at LCC and I just thank God so much for these wonderful opportunities. We surrender our lives to God. Every word we hear is the word of God and it has power. Actually, it doesn't have power. It is power. Hallelujah. I want us to pray. Oh, to Jesus we surrender. Oh, to you we freely give. And we will never trust you, Lord. We surrender. All. Lord, we surrender. All. Oh, to you, our blessed Savior, we surrender. Father, we surrender this word to you again. We surrender our hearts unto you, O God. I surrender my heart unto you, O God. The Lord, you will use me to speak your word, your infallible word, O God. May it have power. Lord, Holy Spirit, speak unto us that we do not leave here the same, that we leave here empowered, strengthened to be who you want us to be. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I just love this message because it is an understanding that I probably didn't have and I've been in church all my life. And it's not controversial. You know, when you look at the message, it says the real, the real, the real prayer, the real Lord's prayer, the real Lord's prayer. So let's say the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. I will be done on earth. As it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but leave us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So we've said the Lord's Prayer, haven't we? So what do we mean by the real Lord's Prayer? Is that what we just said? It says the real Lord's Prayer. But let's stay with me as we go. You know, when we heard John 17 verse 1 says, Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you. Chapter 17 of John says, Jesus spoke these words, not the one we've just said. Let me put it to you. If you teach some people how to cook, do you say that's my food? When you cook at home, can you say that's your food? I think so. So the Lord's Prayer, not to be controversial here. We are outlining this as the Lord's Prayer. And I state again, this is not for controversy, but just to en enhance our understanding and enlighten us to know what Jesus taught the disciples in Matthew was a prayer that how we pray, but it's aptly teamed as the Lord's Prayer. But in John 17, Jesus himself prayed. Who is Jesus? The Lord. The whole John 17 is Jesus praying. So, I state again, it's not for controversy, but it's for us to understand. Yes, when they say, say the Lord's Prayer in school or wherever, it's the one you know. But let's have the understanding today. Some of us Christians have skipped this verse. Or we haven't taken it seriously. Because we think the Lord's Prayer is what we pray. There's nothing wrong with that prayer. But let's pay particular attention to John 17. When the Lord himself prayed. 
In Matthew 21, 13, he says, And he said to them, this is Jesus, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. Talking to all of us. When Jesus went into the synagogue and destroyed, Before feeding the 4,000, he prayed again. You know? Before Peter's confession of him as Christ, he prayed again. I hope you're not getting tired of Jesus praying. At his transfiguration, he prayed. For some children, when they brought their children to him, he prayed again. After the return of the 70, he prayed. Before giving the Lord's prayer, he prayed. Before raising Lazarus, he prayed. Get used to this. Because as he faced the reality of the cross, he prayed again. And at the last supper, he prayed. He prayed for Peter in Gethsemane. He prayed again. Even on the cross, he still prayed. When he resurrected and he met them at Emmaus, the road to Emmaus, he prayed again. At the ascension, Jesus prayed again. Is this becoming a theme? Can you say about yourself, when I woke up, I prayed. When I walked to the toilet, I prayed. When I had my breakfast, I prayed. When I sat in my car, I prayed. When I sat on my office chair, I prayed. Even when I was cleaning my ears, I prayed. Jesus, give us an example that you pray all the time. So if we're not doing this, I doubt it if God minds you telling him, God, I'm going to Lulu, so please help me. (laughs) He does not mind that. God, this situation, I cannot do it, so please help me. Before running to your friend, Jesus gave us a template of prayer. So we ought to pray and not to faint. Wherever you find yourself fainting or becoming weak, you lack prayer. Because he said, this was the words of Jesus. Men ought to pray and not to faint. So substitute it. When you're not praying, you're fainting. 
Let's keep that at the back of our minds. So John 17 then, you know, this chapter embraces the longest recorded prayer of our Lord whilst he was on earth. No doubt he prayed other prayers everywhere. Like we said, he prayed all the time, as lengthy as this one. For we know he spent much time in prayer and in communion with his heavenly father. But God did not see fit to give these orders, these other prayers to us, as the Holy Ghost spoke to holy men. We have many of the sermons of Jesus, many of his parables, but only this one lengthy prayer we find in the Bible that Jesus did. You know? So Jesus, in John 17, prayed. You know? And I want us to get to this. The setting of this prayer was in the upper room. We've had the upper room. Those were the last moments of Jesus on earth. Some of the last moments. You know, in the previous hours, Jesus had served, he had comforted and instructed his anxious followers. So we're bringing a setting to how he prayed. So follow me as we journey to when Jesus prayed. He did a feet washing. He washed the disciples' feet. You remember that? Even Judas. They had the last supper. Had something to eat. And he disclosed Judas, betraying him and Peter denying him. Leading on to this, he told his disciples that I am about to die. Imagine this, that somebody you followed all this time, you've left your family. You think that Jesus is the Messiah. You believe him and then all of a sudden he tells you, I'm about to die. Oh my days. If it was you, I bet you you go, what a waste of my time. Because don't get me wrong. In the Rome, back in the time, they thought the Messiah has come. They thought that he was going to destroy Rome and then stay here. The new heaven is now here. The Messiah is with us. Even the disciples at some point were not sure. They didn't know that Jesus... So when he told them at that time, I'm about to die, they were heartbroken. I will be. I bet you will be. Imagine following somebody with all your life, Peter, Seven him with everything. And then he tells you, guys, I'm dying tomorrow. What? But Jesus consoled them. He consoled them and he gave them the love that he brought. He says, do not worry. I am going to prepare a place for you. He promised them of life and the Holy Spirit coming. That is the best thing Jesus could give them at the time. You know, that... I am about to go, but I'm giving you the Holy Spirit. As me and you understand, and those following online, if you do not know, Jesus, I call him the second of the, of the, of the Trinity. God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, same. My friend says the same difference. There is nothing, no disparity, but he promised the Holy Spirit. He was coming back as a spirit, even as he left as a being, a human being. So not to bore you with the story of Jesus, God wanted to reconcile us with him and the reason Jesus came. So Jesus is God in human form. Then he was about to go, then he says, when I go, the third one will come, the Holy Spirit. So this comforted the disciples. They were still a bit unhappy because I will be the same. So this was the setting. This was the setting of these prayers. So when he did that, then he went up and then he started praying. So when we look at the prayer, if you have your Bibles, have a look at John 17 now. And I start this. I'm just introducing this to you. Hold your hand up if you've never read this seriously. We've read this passage and gone by and gone by. But the Lord prayed. This is Jesus praying. So I'm not Jesus. I'm a follower of Jesus, but I want to read these out to us, the whole prayer. And I want us to engage as the Lord is praying. So Jesus now prays for himself. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son also may glorify you. As you have given him authority over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, 
and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. And Jesus prayed for his disciples. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You give them to me and they have kept your word. Now they have known all that things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me. And they have received them and have known surely that I came forth from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world. But for those whom you have given me. For they are yours. And all mine are yours. And yours are mine. And I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world. But these are in the world. I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the word has hated them because they are not of the world. Just as I am not of the world, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As, I sa- as you send me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. Now Jesus prays for all believers. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be one in us that the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you gave me, I have given them. That they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you in me. That they may be made perfect in one. That the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me. For you love me before the foundation of the world, O righteous Father. The world has not known you, but I have known you. And these have known that you sent me, and I have declared to them your name. And will declare it, that the love with you which you love me may be in them, and I in them. Amen. Hallelujah. Profoundly, Jesus prayed this. And as I, I tried to be Jesus, I feel the power of this prayer that we neglect. This is the real Lord's Prayer. 26 verses. Of Jesus speaking. Nowhere in the Bible will you have it as Jesus going on that way. The nature of this prayer is profound and magnificent if you felt it. The words are plain yet majestic, simple yet mysterious. You know, the inter Trinitarian communication between the Father and the Son was going on. It encompasses the entire sweep of redemptive history. Jesus coming from election to glorification 
including the themes of regeneration. All of it was coming through this prayer. Revelation, illumination, sanctification, and preservation. If you head at the end, preserve them. The veil is drawn back and the reader, you, me, were escorted by Jesus Christ into the holy of holies. I hope that somebody here felt that. When we read this, take your time when you go home, read this, and embrace yourself like how you watch your movies. You will find out that it takes you into the holy of holies, to the very throne of God, the communication between a father and a son, but most spectacularly, one same being, father and son. This is the real Lord's Prayer. What is the substance of this prayer? This is where we're coming to. Like I said to you, this is not a controversy. Oh, stop that other Lord's Prayer. But this is to tell you the Lord's Prayer. When Jesus prayed, what is the substance of this prayer? To glorify the Son. That your Son also may glorify you. In the, verse, in the B of John 17, 1. It says to glorify your Son first. That your son also may glorify you. Can you see what's going on there? When I read it, I'm like, to glorify the son, that your son may also glorify you, that we are both glorified. This is God asking God to glorify God. It's so beautiful. But that's real. The discourse between Jesus and his father, God and God, is so amazing. His prevailing focus had always been on glorifying his father. When Jesus lived, tell me every step he took was to announce himself to the world and go, look at me, Big J, I'm here now. No. Big J gave glory to God. I say Big J, forgive me. One of my bosses always comes, Tabby, I hope you're not going to slip Big J in our conversations today. (laughs) That's where I picked my Big J from, yeah. So... He, he, every time I speak to him, he goes, when are you going to slip the big J in now? It's a beautiful thing to behold. That he knows that Jesus is real in us. Hallelujah. So throughout Jesus' ministry, he was continually seeking the glory of the one who sent him. Me and you are sent the same way by God into this earth. You're not just here. Just Occupying some space in your room, in your house, at work. Our purpose here is to glorify God. Jesus showed us this. So the substance of this prayer is Jesus going, now is the time that I'm about to give you glory. And I receive some of that glory as well. Bear in mind that everything Jesus came to do was to glorify God. All of it. None of it. So the examples, as Christians, as we are, the substance of this Jesus prayer is that he wanted God to be glorified. Simple as that. He goes on to pray for the disciples. He goes on to pray for all of us who will believe in him after. All to his glory. That's it. The disciples too will be those who glorify the Father by bringing glory to the Son. They, along with all who would believe in the Son, would share in God's glory. God says, when we read in the Bible, it says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That was the beginning. But Jesus came that we might be reconnected to God. Sin is when you miss the glory of God. Every time you find ourselves in sin, Remember, you are missing out on the glory of God. So Jesus came to do this act, to connect us. So now we believe him. We are enjoying of the glory of God. The more we stay out of sin, the more of the glory we have. Hallelujah. I listened to a message this week which really encouraged me. It says God has given us everything pertaining to life, you know. And it says out of your belly, those that believe me in John 7, out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water. That was real. Me and you, out of our bellies, our hearts are supposed to flow rivers of living water. When we stay pure, when our hearts become pure, so much so that it's not following up. He says, you know, in the Garden of Eden, he he calls the rivers, I think three of them, Tigris, Ephrates, Pishon, all of these are where gold actually is. These rivers are where gold actually come from. They still are on this earth. But he says we will have, we will partake in that when we stay pure. This is not a digression. The Holy Spirit wants you to know that 
the more pure we are, you get a raise in your salary. Believe it. The more pure you are, your life becomes better. And purity is not purity of what you're doing. Let me straighten this. No, the purity of heart is what God wants from us. That's what Jesus came to bear. So we know the purity is what connects us to the glory of God. Jesus prayed. So the substance of this prayer is to give God glory. Hallelujah. Is somebody with me today? The substance of this, the focal point, is the glory of God being manifested also through the cross. Because he is about to die. Jesus was about to die. This prayer contains the simplest of sentences. I don't know if you have to pick your dictionary. I was, I was saying the prayer. Though the ideas are profound, it is the proof that the difficulty we have in understanding God's truth is not in the complexity of the truth itself or in the language with which it is conveyed. It's not logarithms. It's not German philosophy. It is all because our own ignorance and our sin and spiritual lethargy makes us not take the Bible even well. Oh, when I read the Bible, I get confused. Because you're living in sin. The Holy Spirit will be closer to you and teach you his word. So every time I'm not understanding the Bible, I ask the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit doesn't live with filth. So we need to sanctify ourselves. And we're sanctified by what? The blood of Jesus. Our purity is by the blood of the Lamb. Let nobody confuse you and put you down. Then, oh, I don't think I'm pure enough. Do you know the blood of Jesus has saved you? Call on the blood. I come boldly by the blood of Jesus. I am pure now. That belief in the blood of Jesus is saving grace, brings purity to you. Let nobody confuse you. You know, Jesus viewed the cross from an eternal perspective. He was not discompassionate, you know. But he was dependent on the Father and the Father glorifying himself because God set forth to redeem me and you. And he used Jesus Christ himself comes down. So that glory to glory is Jesus to God amongst us. So this Lord's Prayer is telling us that for all of it, the focal point should be the glory of God. You know, so that's the substance of this prayer. Jesus speaks to his father about the nature of their communion, about the outworking of the eternal plan of salvation. They had worked it out. And about how the disciples and all believers, me and you, will fit into that plan. So this discourse, this beautiful prayer, the significance of it was that the father will be glorified, but also it signifies how the eternal plan of salvation was to come about. About how the disciples and all of us now that believe will fit in. That is the significance of this prayer. Are you with me? So we know the substance is to glorify him. The significance is that it will be laid out how this eternal plan of salvation will come about. You know, so we are in a good place. We are in a good place. If ever you cannot pray, take John 17. Read it out. You are praying the prayer that Jesus prayed for you. How cool is that? God, I am repeating what your son told you about me. What you should do. Keep me safe. The world is so evil that if Jesus didn't pray this prayer, even though when he was leaving, he was bringing the Holy Spirit to be with us. The Holy Spirit does not entertain sin. So the world is so evil that if you do not live a holy life with God, communing and committed to Christ, to the things of God, you are in an evil world. So the significance of this prayer is that we connect. You know, because this prayer is the longest and arguably the most significant of Jesus' recorded prayers. <laughs> the irony that the Lord's Prayer was given to some other prayer, for me, is a bit bizarre. But that's not a problem because it's still the Bible. Matthew 6, 9 to 13, the Lord's Prayer that me and you just prayed at the beginning. And forgive us our, our trespasses. How is Jesus sinful? He will not ask for forgiveness. Jesus never sinned. So how is that the Lord's Prayer? Does that make sense? Jesus doesn't ask for forgiveness. He was teaching us how to pray. Does that clear things up for us? Because... 
Thank you, Spirit of God. The Spirit of God was in Christ completely because he is God. So he had no sin. So our understanding today is to understand when we say our Father who art in heaven, we are going according to how Jesus, you know the disciples saw Jesus praying all the time and his prayers were so powerful. So they went to him. Jesus, we pray, but we seem to pray amiss. Teach us how to pray. Then he says, when you pray, give glory to God first. Ask him to forgive you. Acknowledge his goodness. Ask him to forgive as you forgive others. You know, so he taught us how to pray in Matthew 6. But his prayer, as we're learning today, is the real Lord's prayer. Let's not take it for granted. If you want to know what God prayed to God, John 17 outlines this to us. And it's not to say, oh, that was Jesus praying, so you can pray that same prayer. Because we, want, we are an example of Jesus. Christian, I still haven't made that t-shirt yet, but I put it out here. Christian, you're a Christian, I'm a Christian. Christ, I-A-N, is Christ in action now. I've revealed this to you. This is, is Christ in us now. That's why you're a Christian. So you can pray this prayer. You can tell God, God, you remember you came. Remember, you told yourself to look after me. It's powerful. That is the significance of this prayer. You know, when we, when, we, when we understand the word of God, and as we're talking about prayer, let me put it out here now. When Jesus said, sometimes we pray, we pray amiss. Because it is not what? The same way we're talking about the significance of Jesus praying, it was to do what? Glorify God. When have you asked God? The God, please, let me be a bit carnal. God, I need a Range Rover. I need a five-bedroom house. God, I want those Gucci shoes. Please, God, give me some Armani watch. God, I just want to have a big mansion. Some of us have prayed those prayers before. <laughs> I have. God, I want to own Jabria. God, I'm going to Ghana. Make me the president. Some ambitious prayers we pray. But what is the essence of that prayer? What do you want to do with that Range Rover? Show off. Look at me. Some people say, you put your hand on the driving around like that. They call it seven. You put your seven on the, on the, at the window and then to show off. That is not to God's glory. So some of the prayers we pray, I am sorry to tell you, they will not be answered. Sorry, I have to put this out there. If it doesn't glorify God, God, you see that, you see that next door neighbor? She's got a nice Range Rover. I won't want to. Really? For what? So I can also say I have one. It's not a competition, is it? If it doesn't glorify God, maybe sometimes God is God. He has pity on us. He might give you to show you a lesson. Yeah. So God wants us to glorify him. All about God is preeminence, like greatness, glory. So everything we do, Jesus has showed us in this real Lord's prayer, is to God's glory. If you want a salary raise so that your friends will know that you're also some guy, you know, I earn 1,000 KD every month, you know. <laughs> you might want to put it in there to say, yeah, that, that gives God glory because his son is enjoying life. Maybe. <laughs> but deep down your heart, you want to be able to buy certain things to show off. Does it, does it resonate with somebody? When have you asked God for something and deep down your heart you say, God, that this will glorify you? No, you want to glorify yourself. <laughs> Let's think deeply about this. Sometimes, some of the prayers we make, we have wasted our time, unfortunately, because, God, I want a promotion so that I can represent you at my workplace in power. That when I speak, people will hear. 
and see your love through me, you will get that promotion. God, I want these stripes. I'm in the army, as you know. I want this big cross, so I'm a general, you see? So when I'm coming, you know, everybody bow. You will remain a private forever, I can tell you that. (laughs) Private is the lowest rank in the army. Because God knows the only one is about yourself. When Jesus prayed, he was about to go on the cross to die. But all he was seeking. Every time we go into a little bit of problem, we're crying because we're thinking about ourselves. Sometimes me and you need to go to God. God, thank you for this horrible guy in my office. I know that, Lord, you are working through me for patience. You are working in me that I'll be more patient to your glory. God, take this guy away. Kill him. (laughs) Or I'm, I'm finding a new job. Jesus was about to, he was about to die. But he was seeking the glory of God. As he's God, he could have gone, click his fingers and disappear. But he prayed that God, you will be glorified because he believed in the eternal plan of God to redeem me and you to his glory. Not to show to the devil that, hey, look at me, look at what I'm doing. God does not compete with the devil. He does not compete with Satan, guys. I just came to remind you, those who magnify Satan so much. Oh, the devil is here and you're shaking. You don't, you don't quake at the presence of God, but you're so scared of the devil. Let's think about this. We've been defeated in our minds and in our spirit because we elevate the devil more than we left God. It's a danger. God does not compete with anybody. He says, no man will share my glory. He takes the glory to himself. So he knew what he was doing. Jesus rejoiced after this prayer. In conclusion, he rejoiced. Knowing that a redemption that had been predetermined in eternity was about to happen. That he finds his terminus in time and space. That this is the job that God gave me. It's about to be what? Finished. So Jesus understood the hour had finally come for the fulfillment of what God wanted him to do. God had promised Before time began, I sit down sometimes and I go, I know very well that God knew that Adam will fail. Do you bear with me? I, I, this is my personal belief. Because God knows everything, doesn't he? He knows everything. So when you're going through that pain, know that God knows everything. He knows that you will move from that pain, a stronger person to a better person. Because you have learned something good of how to be humble. Of how to know how to keep a little. So when you have more, you don't just start throwing it away. Everything God knows. Do you think God created Adam and thought that, oh, I've made a mistake? No, he knew what he was doing. Did Jesus not know that Judas was going to betray him? Of course he did. So he knew, he knows everything. Never hide from God because he knows everything. Some Christians go, oh, God doesn't like me to do this, so I'll close the door. (laughs) Can you imagine? You close the door to God. (laughs) It means you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, but me and you, by the virtue of this Jesus showing us His communication to God, and I put it to himself, gives us the understanding that God, all he wants to do is to be glorified and us receiving this glory with him. God is so good. Come on, repeat with me. God is good. good. And the reason we share this song with you today is so that you know that God is good. None of us here is good. I'm sorry, I'm being really harsh today. The word says, thank you, sis. The word says that none of us, open Matthew 19, 17. It says, why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, there is only one who is good. 
if you want to enter life, keep the commandments. So that's stated in the Bible. I didn't say that. None of us is good. We're trying. That doesn't mean go home and think, oh, I'm not good enough. We are good by virtue of our connection with Jesus Christ. Okay? And he's a faithful God. God is faithful. So when we set out to understand that Jesus prayed, and his prayer was to give God glory. So anytime we want to know, as I said before, that everything we're doing here on earth is to give God's glory. Some people say, I don't know my purpose in life. I can tell you today, if you're listening online, if you're here, your purpose in life is to glorify God. Amen. Simple. Does that make sense? I'm in the army. I am to glorify God. I'm a nurse. I'm to glorify God. I'm a teacher to glorify God. I'm a musician to glorify God. So check what you're doing. If it's not glorifying God, and you're just whinging and murmuring about everything, you're not giving God glory. Let men see, and your light will shine to the glory of God. Doesn't the Bible say that? Let your light so shine before men that they may see my glory. It's not me standing here. To God be the glory. That's a song. It's amazing. But let your light so shine that men may see my glory. This is how God gets his glory. It's not through that song. It's through you shining like Jesus did. Then God receives the glory. Hallelujah. We ought to pray like Jesus prayed. All to give God the glory. That's the substance of the Lord's prayer. The real Lord's prayer. Can we be up on our feet and try to pray? Let's pray. Let's be on our feet to today. We are praying for the body of Christ. Jesus has prayed for us already. In the last bit of it, Jesus prayed that please, as I go, keep them. I want us to get into a time of, Rokula, do you mind just giving us some strength? I want us to pray. We have a few minutes to pray. We have a few items. I want us to pray about these. Because we are exercising what Jesus told us. He showed the example of praying everywhere. But he says, men, me and you, men, women, we ought to pray and not to faint. Because the evil one, according to the Bible, is moving to and fro, seeking who to devour. He's looking for me or you. He hasn't reached your address yet, and he will never in the name of Jesus. But when he comes, we stay strong. We're going to pray for the body of Christ, which is me and you and others. I want you to, with your heart, Remind God that you, you, you prayed, Jesus, for this body, that we will remain strong. He says we should focus our attention on him. I want us to pray. Open your mouth and pray. Pray today that God, the body of Christ, needs you. Sin is becoming so rife that we are even forgetting that it's sin because our conscience is being seared. Please, Lord, help the body. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, to Jesus, who I surrender all, to him I freely give, and I will ever love and trust in thee. His presence daily gave. I surrender all. Church, let's surrender all to Jesus. I surrender all. All to Him. All to Thee. Surrender the body of Christ to God. I surrender, all. Lord, we surrender. All. I surrender all, all to Thee, Lord, to Thee, my blessed Savior. 
as we surrender LCMI, LCC, and the leadership unto God. Oh, to thee, blessed Savior, we surrender. Oh, to thee, Lord. We surrender all to Jesus. We surrender all to you. Marabadosa. Made Mako Seneme Nemeki Monono Brada Daba. Erebea so cabaria do remenia ba rete sonne mani mako sonne me adopa rene me adore di abari ados i aboli abali ala baba ba we surrender we surrender Lord we surrender our lives to you I surrender Oh, to you, Lord. Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My Yes, Lord, this is a prayer. Yes, Lord, our lives, my life is here. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, surrender to Him. Yeah. Yes, Lord, my life, give your life to Him. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, completely, yes. My life, my life is you. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Ah, so came on my yes, Lord. My life is you. I give myself away. I give myself away. I give myself away. So you can use. I give myself meaning. Oh God, I give myself away so you use us to your glory, Lord. I give myself away. I give myself away. I give myself away. Maradoseme. Come on, pray. You can pray. Pray. The Spirit of God is here. He's listening to your prayer. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. In your, I give, I give myself away. Give it all to Him. Give it all to Him. Yeah. I give myself away. So you can you. I 
the body of Christ that it will all be about you oh God it will all be about you and your glory oh God that we may partake in your glory as we give it all to you oh God Father we lift Kuwait unto you it's a land that has received us oh God Father we pray for this land you said wherever our feet shall tread you will bless oh God Father according to your word may you bless this nation that we can be part of it in the name of Jesus we cast away every imagination of the enemy against this nation yes Lord we lift their hearts and their minds unto you oh God thank you Lord thank you God thank you Lord Hallelujah to the King. Hallelujah to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the King. Hallelujah. Oh, 
Sudah 